Okay, um, I wanted to finish doing my hair, but Spirit wanted us to have this conversation really quick, and I don't want to forget about it. Um, so it's one thing that Spirit wants me to continue to reiterate and to get into our psyche, <laughs> um, yours and mine is again to not allow first of all not to allow anybody i don't give a fuck how big their platform is i don't give a fuck how much money they have in their account i don't give a fuck what position they have do not allow anybody to talk to you and treat you any type of way there is a place and there's a decorum that you should have regardless if that's your manager if that's the CEO of the company, if that is a influencer, if that is a celebrity, I don't give a fuck who it was. If it's Jesus, do not let anybody talk to you in any type of way. Now, the thing that I've experienced within my own life is that people have said slick shit. Saying some slick shit lets me know that you're a pussy bitch, right? You're a coward because you don't, you ain't up in my face telling me that shit. And a lot of times, slick shit goes over my head for a long time <laughs> until one day I'm like, wait, did that bitch say? Woody woo woo woo. And then I was like, oh, if I, if I had clocked that, I would have said something slick back because I have a mouth on me. Um, for me personally, my Mars is in Gemini. So the way that I fight is that I could tear you down with my words. And the closer and the more that I know about you, the the worse it gets, right? <laughs> I could go below the belt, which is why a lot of times I just walk away. I block or I, you know, do the things because um, after a while, my conscience will be like, why did you say that? And then I want to apologize and shit like that. But in that moment, bitch, anybody could get it. <laughs> Anybody could do. Um, whether it's your mother, whether it's your significant other, it does not matter who it is. Do not allow people to talk to you any type of fucking way. And I see it so much, especially within the spiritual community, especially when y'all want to go into these little diviners and they're over here talking about they know their ancestors and shit like that. And they think that they could talk to you any type of way. Your ancestors will beat their ancestors ass, bitch. <laughs> But you have to you have to start with that energy. Um, it's an energy. People know who and who not to do shit with. They know who to try and who not to try. And if they do feel a little, a little froggy, let the bitch know the consequences of leaping. <laughs> you do not need to be scared of no bitch. <laughs> There's nobody in this world that you need to be scared of. Everybody, everybody, we all... Even me have people who we might back down to or situations we might back down to. When I'm in the hood, if there's a bitch that has the energy who really will stomp my ass out, I'm not about to be over there with the shits with her. However, I'm not also not going to be <laughs> a scary ass bitch because if she press, I'm going to have to press back, right? But I'm not about to just start no shit with no bitch if I could see like that bitch crazy. Like that bitch, she been through things. <laughs> she been through things worse than me. I'm going to leave her alone because I don't need her demons coming up and she thinking them demons is me right <laughs> she really be mine <laughs> that's different but there's some bitches who who really be feeling themselves and you have to be able to not allow anybody whether it's a bitch whether it's a nigga i don't care who it is do not let people especially pastors especially these religious leaders and stuff like that they really get into these positions and their heads get real big because a lot of them aren't filled with spirit they're not filled with the humility so don't let nobody talk to you any type of way. Now, we talked about Job, right? And we talked about how, in one video, we talked about how, um, about wickedness versus, uh, like a test versus a punishment, wickedness versus righteousness, alignment versus non-alignment, right? So the whole time, Job's friends were, um, were bashing him, telling him that he was doing something wicked and stuff like that. And we saw at the end of the story, God was like, now you motherfuckers go and you motherfuckers kids. <laughs> um, you, y'all need to go and do a sacrifice and have Job pray for y'all. What is the guy say? I will make your enemies your footstool. Uh, what's the other one? I don't know. 
Oh, God will prepare a table in front of your enemies, right? So God prepared Job's table in front of the very enemies who the ones who were very much telling him, instead of giving him words of encouragement, were picking on him, was uh, taking glee in condemning him in his situation when he was coming for them for as a confidant, as, a, you know, words of encouragement, right? So it's times where you would go, so say like you're you trying to go to a reader and you're looking for encouragement, you're looking for clarity, you're looking for this, that, and the third, and this bitch over here yelling at you. She yelling at you. She said, why you need to do this and that? What the fuck? Why you drinking alcohol? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to blah, 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 right? All up in your face, being all disrespectful, making you angry. If you're coming to a person who says that they're a speaker of God, who says that they, they're a messenger of God, and you talk to them and instead they're belittling you, they're not uplifting. God's not going to tear you down. God's going to course correct you. God's going to be honest, straightforward, direct, but God's not going to tear you down. God's not going to have you being discouraged of listening to the to the message. God's not going to have you on guard and dismissive for the message. You see what I mean? Like you go, God's going to Okay, so let's okay, let's let's keep it buck, right? So you go to church and you like to eat coochie. So you're a girl and you like to eat coochie and you go going to church to get you a word on your finances and you go in there and now this bitch over here condemning you about eating coochie and say you going to hell and shit like that. And then she goes to proceed with the message. You're on defense. You feel offended. You're, you know, down. This bitch just said, God, you, God said you going to hell. God don't like you and shit. Right. Are you going to be receptive to the message of encouragement from her? No, you're not. So if God sent you to go for a message and then the person goes and tears you down, God's like, that's not the person. That's not me. And God said that the, cause we talked about this uh, in another video about the false prophet. And I was supposed to have put the thingamajig for y'all. The uh, scripture. Let me put my little ring on real quick. Let me put my ring on. Ooh, uh, you know, I'm gonna always make a song a Negro spiritual. Let me put my ring on. Put it on sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and is very ill. For he who falls into the fire often into the water. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? Um, I'm over here flipping like I know what scripture it was, like I remember. An angel falling, fall on me. Hey, I will, I will remember you. Anywho, he said something about, about it's in Matthews, y'all. It's in Matthews, okay? Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Now, I feel like it's over here. <laughs> I think I didn't feel it. <laughs> no, I didn't. But I'm going to read this right here. Mm, I'm going to actually just... We might just get into the scripture itself. The whole thing. The whole thing. Well, hold on. The second is that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, period. I understand that. Mm -hmm. So you, when you love your neighbor as yourself, you won't want to talk to them in disrespect. You will want to have empathy, compassion for the situation that a person is coming. Why would you belittle somebody who on a spiritual journey and they just starting out? I'm not about to belittle you because you ain't healed from your mama. Bitch, you ain't even got to your sacral chakra yet. Like, you just bought a crystal. And you and it was just the rose court. You was just learning how to get to yourself. Well, why would I belittle you, talk down to you, curse you out and shit about the situation with your mama? you like, wait, hold up, hold up, bitch. First of all, you don't even know me and my mama's situation. <laughs> you don't even know. Right? So, just saying. Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Well, no me. Okay, so 23. Then Jesus. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be serious. Okay, so then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Okay, Moses. Therefore, all that. Therefore, all that they tell you do and observe and do not to a, and do not do according to their deeds, for they say things and do not do them. Mm. Let me read that over again. The scribes and the Pharisees, those are like those, um, those are the religious leaders, um, the people who write the, the Bible um, and things like that, right? Um, so he's saying like the things like they wrote, the scribes, the, the scrolls before they put it into a full book, um, them, your religious, your pastor, right? The Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Now let's go back into the series, the story about Moses and his chair. Moses, remember, Moses took them folks, the Israelites out of Egypt. Let my people go. Okay, period. Um, he split it up the Red Sea and shit, right? woo de woo And he sent them on a journey. Now, when, when Moses originally went on the journey for himself, before he even had the intention of freeing the Israelites, this was when he first left the Egyptians because he helped save somebody or some shit like that. And then they was coming after him. Um, I think because they found out he was helping and shit. Um, I advise reading the Moses story from Zora Neale Hurston. I really enjoy the story form in which she did. And she done like research on like different. Shout out to Juju. It's Juju Bay. Shout out to Juju. All you need is a little Juju. Um, honestly, if I had to say now I don't know about her content now because I haven't really indulged in it um but before 2020 if I had to say not even before 2020 even after 2020 if I had to give you anybody who is so filled with spirit and is so sweet and humble and is so like realistic and equally balanced between the two right like she's She's a turn upper and she also is really filled up with the different words and stuff like that. And that's Juju. Like if I could really give a stamp of approval for, for a, a reader, uh, she's more than a reader, right? But just the way that she's, she talks and the way that she explains things, she's just so sweet. And it's so like, I don't know, every time I like catch her lives or anything, I just be feeling like my heart just got hugged. <laughs> like, it just got, I'm about to cry. Like, and she's just so sweet. Like, you know, and I think about her teachings and stuff like that. And she really helped a lot for me. Um, especially when it came to like ancestral veneration she didn't she didn't add confusion she didn't shame you she really helped you like grow into yourself and stuff like that so i really really i really encourage you guys to watch uh a little i mean listen to a i think she put it on youtube now too but for sure on podcast the little juju podcast like from the very beginning like literally from the very beginning like each episode just helps you a lot when it comes to things, especially as we just ended our root chakra, I really think you should go into her, um, go to her readings. She does different different divinations. She doesn't use like typical like oracle decks. Sometimes she does, but her things are so ancestral. She does a lot in Baltimore for people. Like she's on the corner. She's always giving. She gets free readings all the time. She's just a beautiful spirit. She minds her business. <laughs> she don't be in none of the, the drama of everybody else. She's about unity. She brings all the readers together. A beautiful spirit. A beautiful, beautiful spirit. And honestly, <laughs> not even to, like, I don't like to compare women, but I, I love her better than the Hood Hiller. Honestly, I feel like her content, some majority of the time, will make you insecure um, than it would necessarily uplift you. And I think that her content is way more striving towards money driven than it is anything else. So if you are typically into to the, to the drive of money and hyper fixated on abundance in the form of your bank account then obviously i would say go watch the hood hiller's content she's really good with um what do i like about i like 
I just liked to see her operate through her psychic abilities, but Juju does the psychic abilities and combine it with like, I don't know, you just see her working with God. Like, you know, like you just, you're like, yeah, you work with God. <laughs> um, so there's a big ass spider web. Anyway, um, the spider's been around. Honey, the spider's been around. So I just wanted to say, just it's never necessary for you to allow anybody to um to talk to you any type of way. <clears throat> I don't give a fuck what their positioning is, right? So back to Joe, back to uh Moses. <laughs> Go on side right. Back to Moses. Um, so in Zorna Hurston's book, right? So he went on the journey first and he experienced the power of God through like when he was starving, God produced mana for him. When he needed water, God gave him the water, right? Like he saw all these mystical supernatural things as he journeyed through the mountain himself. And then he found refuge, right? That's when he ended up finding his wife. He ended up finding Wooty Woop. I forgot his name or whatever. And then that's when Woofy Woof told him about his his vision of freeing the Israelites, which he was supposed to have done, but he didn't do. Uh, so he gave it the responsibility to Moses. So Moses went back to Egypt, freed the people, did all of the things, and guided the people back through the journey that which Moses is going through. So it was like me going through my chakra journey, and I'm navigating through it teaching you on YouTube, showing you in real life how I'm going through it, right? And then you're following suit. But the issue was some people were continuing to follow suit, but other people was like, this is too much. So I told y'all how like there's a period where spirit will have you go through hardship. You have to go through the hardship to go through the spiritual awakening. Um, spirit is going to have you change careers. Spirit is also going to supply your every need. But it's about this trust of the unknown, but it's so uncomfortable, right? The gnosis, like we had in our other uh, reading. <laughs> The gnosis, right? It's the checking through the unknown, knowing that no matter what, you're still not going to know, right? Um, but going through that journey and um, of that of financial hardship, of emotional hardship, of spiritual hardship, you're going to be attacked constantly. You're going to think you lost your fucking mind. All of these type of things in your beginning stages of your spiritual awakening, Everybody has to go through that. So if I'm up at my third eye, if I'm at my crown chakra because I've exceeded a cell past it, it is stupid of me to see you down at your root chakra and yell at you about the shit that you're going through and expecting you to be up here with me and the knowledge that I acquired when in fact I know that you were just at the beginning. And that was a point where I didn't know either. So why would I make you feel bad about that, right? So anyways, the people was complaining and complaining, right? They were mad at the food that they had to eat mana and stuff like that. Now, mind you, these were sacrifices. These were things that they had to go through as an initiation to get to the promised land, to get the things that they want, to to get to their... Moses' journey was of self-realization. It was a journey of, of oneness, of letting the people know that you don't have to stay within this, right? You don't have to continue to be bound, be a slave to the mentality of the Egyptians. You don't have to be a slave to the matrix. You don't have to be a slave to American politics. You can free yourself from that through internal self-realization, through oneness with spirit, right? And we talked about Nikita about sacrifice and how the importance of sacrifice. And he talks about that some people their sacrifice is going to be of duty um hold on because I, I just read this the other day um he says <laughs> Um, for one who cannot understand what the personality of Godhead is, sacrifice to the demigods is recommended. According to the different material qualities of the person's concern, different types of yajnas, which is sacrifice, are recommended in the Vedas, which is the big book, you know, the big book. Anyway, so worship of different demigods is also on the same basis, namely according to different qualities. For example, the meat. The meat eaters are recommended to worship the goddess Kali, um, the ghastly form of material nature. And before the goddess of the sac of the, the goddess, the sacrifice of animals is recommended. But for those who are in the mode of goodness, this transcendental worship of Vishnu is recommended. But ultimately, all yajnas are meant for gradual promotion to the transcendental position. 
for ordinary men, at least five Vajnas known as Panka Maha Yajna, what is it, Yajna are necessary. One should know, however, that all the necessities of life the human society requires are supplied by the demigod, agents of the Lord. No one can manufacture anything. Take, for example, all the eatables of the human society. Those, these eatables include grains, fruits, vegetables, milk, sugar, etc. For the person in the mode of, in the mode of goodness and also eatables for the non-vegetarians like meats, none of which can be manufactured by man. Then again, take, for example, heat, light, water, air, etc., which are also necessities of life. None of them can be manufactured by the human society. Without the Supreme Lord, there can be no profuse sunlight, moonlight, rainfall, breeze, etc., without which one, no one can live. Obviously, our life is dependent on supplies from the Lord. Even for our manufacturing enterprises, we require so many raw materials like metal, sulfur, mercury, manganese, and so many essentials, all of which are supplied by the agents of the Lord, with the purpose that we should make proper use of them to keep ourselves fit and healthy for the purpose of self-realization, leading to the ultimate goal of life, namely liberation from the material struggle uh, for existence, right? So God wanted the people of the Israelites to not be miserable right not to be bound to the egyptian slaves so god was like let my homies go right let my homies go i'm just kidding <laughs> so he said let my people go <laughs> shit like that right let, let them go pharaoh 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 <laughs> let my people go okay so um I gotta watch out for the time because the, the realtor and them is coming. Okay, so you see how my hair is just like poofing back up. <laughs> it's like poofing more and more. Anyways, um, so yes, so so the people were supposed to go through their journey and stuff like that, but they kept complaining. They kept complaining. They was bashing Moses, like, what the fuck? Like, how do you know? Like, they kept trying to get Moses to prove God. So it's like I told y'all how these people are going to be when it comes to readers. You tell them stuff. You tell them how God is. You tell them the cryptic messages, the riddles and shit like that of God. You understand that the reading is timeless. It doesn't mean that it will be instantaneously. It won't mean that the reading, the things would occur in this two months. It might happen next year. It may happen two years from now and stuff like that. But if they're not understanding it, they're still in the ma operating in the matrix, right? If they're still operating for instantaneous results, results i press this button this action happens then they're going to want to sue you they're going to want to sue and that's why spirit said if you're still going to be greedy and continue to make your money off of the readings then you're going to reap the consequences of that um but Yes, yeah, so the people were complaining, 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 asking Moses to prove God, prove God, prove God. They didn't want to fight to to get over to get there to get there into their rightful positions and stuff like that, right? They didn't want to do anything. It just was lazy. And then they were like, "Well, fuck it, since you're not going to do all of this and the third, we might as well go ahead and we hungry. We just had the third, so we might as well go ahead and um." And worship the gods, the Egyptian gods, the gods for the Egyptians, right? And so Moses was like, nigga, <laughs> no, <laughs> right? So Moses got fed up. God got fed up because God was trying to get these people to understand their own power, understand their their own godness within them and understand that they too can exhibit the same things that Moses had. But they were like, nah, fuck that, that shit ain't real, right? So they'll tell you as a reader, you ain't real. Your psychic abilities ain't real. They're going to turn on you. She's crazy. She needs to be in a mental hospital. She this, that, and the third, right? So they want to do all of this, all of this, all of this. Um, and so Moses was like, God was like, all right, fuck it. Like, obviously they need to have a ruler. They need to have a set of rules. They're not about their self-sovereignty. So go ahead, right? So it'll be like you telling people, you know, it's like right now you're going through these hardships, right? So it's like, they'll be like, fuck it. I'm going to just get a job because I can't. <laughs> 
I cannot have the freshest shoes. I cannot have this, that, and the third. I cannot have just $2 in my account. I cannot just leave my apartment and go back home to live with family. I can't just do all of this, that, and the third. I'm still, still bound to these material things, right? I can't do all of this, that, and the third. I can't sacrifice this for a moment. I can't sacrifice my comfort for this moment. So fuck it, I'm going to get my job. Fuck it, I'm going to sell my soul to the devil. Fuck it, I'm going to be a police officer. Fuck it, I'm going to sign into the army. Fuck it, I'm going to do this, that, and the third, right? And so God is like, so God was like, all right, obviously they don't want, like I said, they was like, obviously you don't want to do that. So Moses, they was like, all right, here, boom, give them a set of rules. Now here's the 10 commandments. Give them this. Now here's that. Give them this temple. Now Moses has a temple. Now he a preacher. Now he got to preach the word to y'all every week because obviously y'all was in quick clacking to have your own self-sovereignty. So now Moses is gone on to glory. And now these Pharisees and stuff have taken over the churches, right? So it's like your pastor taking over the churches and stuff like that. And so he says, <clears throat> the scribes and the Pharisees, <laughs> I did took y'all on a journey. Okay, so <laughs> the scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore, all that they tell you, do and observe. But do not do according to their deeds, for they say things and not do them. How many of our pastors have told us to do things and they have not done them themselves? How many readers have told you to do things and they have not done them themselves? How many times have we seen false influencers to tell you to do things? And they have not done it themselves. I just saw this thing where this girl is exposing all the fitness gurus who will have a meal plan for y'all. <laughs> They'll have a meal plan and they ain't didn't, and it's hella restrictive, and they ain't did none of that shit themselves. They just got surgery. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> and it kills me because it'd be the main people who got VSGs that be talking about, hell, I'm gonna help you lose weight. <laughs> like, baby, you didn't even help yourself. <laughs> And this is somebody who has been very fat and has gotten really small and has got really fat again. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so they tie up heaven. So they tie up. His... <laughs> I'm so tickled. <sighs> Let me drink some water. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Oh, the range of emotions in this 27 minutes. So the tie up, they tie up heaven, bur heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as a finger. Like I told you, these people be yelling at y'all, but they ain't did no shit themselves. They telling you about your coochie and they ain't did no coochie shit themselves. They telling you, protect your womb. Don't let nobody just be in your shit. Meanwhile, they over here fucking it up and everybody else in the world. Right? At least y'all see I'm, I'm dick deprived. Y'all see me. <laughs> anyway, so. But they do all their deeds to be noticed by men. For they broaden their full of, ooh, big word. Phylac trees. What is that? A small cases containing a scriptural text worn on the left arm and forehead for religious purposes. Okay, so they did some little religious little dotty dots and stuff, right? Got their gear, they put that shit on and lit in the tassels of their garments. And how many times you put you see your pastor put his robe on, but he ain't nowhere near sanctified. Okay. Okay. They love the place of honor at banquets. It's like them whole ass preachers that be telling you you shouldn't be fornicating. Meanwhile, they having a bitch sucking his whole dick. That's not his wife. Okay. And she's sitting right next to, to the first lady wiping her sweat and shit. But she over here just slobbing and knobbing him. <laughs> but he telling you don't uh, commit, uh, f what is it, fornication. Mind you, fornication ain't even in the Ten Commandments. Right? 
So they love the place of honor and banquets and the chief seats in the sits and the chief seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by men. But do not be called rabbi for one is your teacher and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth your father. Do not call anybody on earth your father. Do not call anybody on earth your God, not even Beyonce. Our Lord and Savior, Beyonce Christ, cannot be our God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But could you imagine? Like, there really is delusional people who really think that that's their Lord and Savior. But <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, do not call anybody on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Do not be called... Do not be called leaders, for one is your leader, that is Christ. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people. Damn, you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people. You deter people away from God with your arrogance. How many people, raise your hand, how many of y'all have left the church because of a pastor? Because they told you that you are not deemed worthy because you like to eat coochie or suck dick. How many of y'all have left the church because the pastor is a hypocrite? How many of y'all left the church because the people had dimmed, dimmed you, condemned you on wearing a crop top to the church house? Should we keep going? Right? A lot of people, a lot of us said we are not religious. We are spiritual because of the trauma we have experienced with people who say they are religious. But all they do is read the word and yell at you. <laughs> all they do is yell at you stop letting these people yell at you they is not high and above you just because they're you know how easy it was for me to become a minister all i did was click on the site and fill out the form and then immediately and paid made the payment <laughs> and immediately i became the minister so how dare i be like oh i'm a minister i'm above you that's stupid as fuck. Bitch, I'm on this journey right along with you. I'm just sharing my journey. I'm just sharing my journey, right? Um, so, yeah. So, heaven for people, okay? No one is better than you. I am not better than the drug dealer. I am just on a different path. I would have still been cool with the homie if he wasn't trying to play me and lie to me. If it was just him doing this drugs, we would have still been cool. But the only thing is we would have had to talk in person. We couldn't talk on the phone. I don't want to incriminate him. That's another reason why I stopped talking to him. I don't want to incriminate him. Okay? Further than he is already incriminated. <laughs> okay? And so I don't have no problem with drug dealers. But I'm just telling y'all, the feds is doing a sweep. <laughs> okay? Listen to the listen to the future song. <laughs> so, um, and I don't even listen to Future and Spirit didn't get that's how I know that was the right one because I don't listen to Future and Spirit gave like Spirit sent that song to me bro and I was just trying to listen to I be fresh as hell with the feds watching yeah because I love me some 2 chains now but I don't listen to Future I don't fuck with Future music I don't like Future music <laughs> Okay, I don't resonate with future music. I stopped listening to Drake when he went and did me when he switched his music to future music. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I um yeah, I stopped listening to Drake once he started doing that uh mixtape with future future. But I don't listen to future music. Oh, I keep saying it like that. But future music came up in the future. <laughs> the fans doing the sweet. So if you're doing shit. Baby, I'm sorry. You're going to have to deal with those consequences. And if you're trying to change and really be on the right path, like use that time when you are in prison to to connect with God. They're going to have a shit ton of religious books. You got a lot of time on your hand. You're going to need to meditate and do the things and really connect spiritually. But that's a part of your journey. That's a part of your spiritual awakening. So I'm not going to judge you when you got charged that shit. But when you go on that journey, the more you sit and when you go inwards, when you go to prison... Watch that shit. Watch the miracles happen. Watch God shorten your sentence. Watch you be protected. 
Watch you be a leader in there. Watch you be an influencer. And then watch when you come out. Watch what God already has set up for you. God gonna have you set up set up right because you changed your way. And it is something and if and if I got money, spirit gonna lead you to me. <laughs> and I'm gonna help you <laughs> on your next step. I swear to God. If I got money and you really did the right, you did the work, and I'm not saying you saying you did it, but you really did it, I promise you God is gonna send you to me. God is going to lead you some way, somehow to me. I'm going to find you and I'm going to help you when you get out and set you up right. So you ain't never have to be tempted to do that shit again. Um, But until then, yes, you're going to have to deal with your consequences. Now, if you are evil, you and you've been doing that fentanyl shit, you going down, bitch. <laughs> you, you ain't never coming out. You ain't never coming out of that place. You was never will see a lot of day outside of that place. You not. And they gonna get your ass for murder. They gonna get your ass for manslaughter. They gonna get, they gonna have, you gonna have several counts of that. You gonna have several counts of manslaughter. They gonna have several counts of drug charges. Several counts of gun violations. They gonna have a whole, they gonna rack that shit. Racks on racks on racks on your sentences. And they gonna build that shit. They were probably even gonna put shit on you that they you ain't even did, bro. And it's not just drug dealers. It's your far, those pharmacists. It's them psychiatrists. It's them therapists. It's them. It's all y'all. All all y'all. When that opioid, that opioid shit come down them people is coming down hard and it's gonna be personal because it's gonna be a lot of them who lost their kids to that shit a lot of them lost their mama to that shit they spouses to that shit a lot of you doctors you surgeons a lot of y'all going down it's not just the niggas on the streets shit they might get off a little bit easier they might but when that opioid, when they finally get that case all together and they really come down on that ass, they coming down. It's going to be a whole bunch of, I'm telling y'all, the new criminals is people you ain't thinking, you thinking it's the hood niggas. The hood niggas ain't doing shit. The hood niggas is working. <laughs> they working. They grinding. They taking care of their kids in the hood. They ain't shit popping off over here. They chilling. They working. It's not us who's going to be the new criminals. The new criminals is going to be the people in Beverly Hills in the hills in calabasas they live really extravagant they was in fraternities they was in sororities okay you're gonna see them little black rich Atlanteans. all them going to be the new criminals because there's a lot of them who's getting a justice for all that sorority hazing shit all that shit Y'all the new criminals. They get, you know how they be having a whole shit like a surge of release of criminals coming out of the prisons and stuff like that? Because they make room for you new ones. <laughs> they make room for you new ones. It's these professional criminals now. Professionals that's going into uh get locked up. Okay? Because you money hungry. And a lot of these uh these lawsuits and stuff is coming to you money hungry preachers. They coming for you religious leaders, you preachers, you readers and stuff like that. All y'all who just be arrogant, God is coming with the storm of humility. I be telling y'all, God always trying to heal. God stay humbling me. Anytime I try to, it don't matter what it is, God instantly humbles me. Like, uh-uh, not you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do what they do. Uh -uh. <laughs> right? Um, so, yes, yeah, so let's continue. Um, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off the kingdom of heaven from people. For, for you do not enter in for you do not enter in yourselves nor do you allow those who are entering to go in so a lot of times like i told y'all the reason why i stopped going to church was because i kept getting into it with a lot of the preachers a lot of the the like you know like every time like i would try to really get into something they um they talk about they won't help and stuff like that so i had did the youth Sunday school and stuff like that. And the youth really enjoyed it. And to give them a thank you, I, I took them to, to um because I was over that and the youth director. So I took them out to dinner. I took them out to dinner and treated it on my own, well, my mama pockets. <laughs> my own mama pockets. My own mama pockets, right? um To treat them 
as a gratitude and just to encourage her to continue to go to study school. But then the preacher, the pastor, she felt some type of way about it. And she was calling me, she was belittling me, she was calling me all types of names. But at that time, the, the thing said to respect, I, I was taught and raised to respect your pastors, that they are above you. So God will condemn you for, for condemning the people, you know, for that. But the thing was, was her hateful spirit. She wanted to control. She was hateful. She didn't like the fact that she saw God in me. She didn't see, she didn't like that these kids were gravitated to me and stuff like that so then she wanted to start she didn't have the same connection with them one I'm younger I'm closer to their age of course they're connecting to me right but she didn't get that same thing and after that she was just she turned me away from the church I didn't want to go to church anymore that's the last time I went to church was with dealing with her I got out of all the all the organizations that I was in with the church now mind you I was in all the church organizations and I was an honor roll doing full time as a student and working two jobs, bro. When I tell y'all, I was I was one of the people on the grind and God really did grant me rest. God get granted me rest for the last three years. God granted me rest and God said, sit your ass down. <laughs> sit your ass down. And I was like, no, I want to make money. God said, sit your ass down. And this is what I want you to do. And that's what I did. So a lot of us, God is like, you need rest because baby, you've done the work. <laughs> you've done it. You know what I mean? But it's a lot of people who will be mad because they see God in you and they're trying to tear you apart from that. Another preacher, I was so into praise dancing and stuff like that at her church. She had the lady kick me out of praise dance. So we stopped going to her church because she kicked me out of praise dance all because my mama didn't want to go to her Christmas party. <laughs> because my mama didn't want to go to her Christmas party. And she wanted my mama to go there because she know my mama would give good gifts. And my mama didn't want to go because that was the exact reason. Uh, we always give good gifts and it's never a good return in our, our investments and stuff like that. So, you know, it's crazy. So, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses. They always come into our houses eating up shit. How many times did your grandma cook something and the pastor came over and ate up the whole food? And now we ain't barely had no food to eat for the Sunday dinner. Um, and for a pretense, you make long prayers. Okay, don't they make long prayers? How many of them be making long prayers? Oh, I've been in church where they made long prayers and long sermons unnecessarily talking about nothing. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land to make one possible. I don't know. And when we don't know, we just not going to know that word. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. <laughs> Woe to you, blind guides who say, whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple is obligated. Those are people who who want you to have all the riches and the golds and stuff. You fools and blind men, which is more important, the gold or the temple that the sanct that sanctified the gold? So going back to your money hungry readers, a lot of these spiritualists, a lot of your spiritual leaders, a lot of these spiritual influencers will tell you and have you fixated on the material items on your bank account on golds and drip down shit you know a lot of y'all done made nipsey hustle into a spiritual guru once he died but when i really went into listening to his music a lot of that shit was on materialism and shit he was just saying, you got to get your mind right, manifest some shit and shit like that. But I think that that was the end results. That was his fruit of his labor and not that was the ultimate goal and chase, right? That should not have ever been the ultimate goal and chase. I watched this documentary of the Midas Touch and, from him on YouTube. And all he did was take this man, this homeless man or whatever this man was. All he did was take him to, this man was tired. He had to get up. This old man was tired. He had to get up and go to work. And he told him like, I'm sleepy. And where did they take him? 
to the strip club afterwards. Now, they took him to the to the studio. They then got this man some chains and gold that look ugly as shit from downtown. And they did all this other sh unnecessary shit. And this old man just probably wanted to sit down. <laughs> he was tired. He just probably wanted y'all to let him go home to his family to drink his stuff. Now he had to be, his energy was drained. Because he had to go around being all around y'all and shit, right? And all he had to do <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck but the funny thing is that you, <laughs> they be they and it's not him i'm not even gonna say that it was nip because he wasn't i don't i guess from the little that i've watched it didn't seem as though he was trying to do all of that i think he was just trying to tell people like believe in your dreams hustle do the things you gotta do to get on your grind don't be ashamed to be out on the corner doing the thing and i really loved how he pointed out the entrepreneur i watched another uh, documentary not documentary but interview he did and i really loved how he 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 highlighted the entrepreneurship on crenshaw boulevard now i've i've grew up on crenshaw and seeing the same niggas over there selling bean pies and incense and shit like that hell my cousin's uh dude old dude got a real on some shit be on there selling his uh stereos and chargers and shit i've seen hood entrepreneurship and i don't think i ever really took appreciation for it i was just like these niggas she's hustling and now that i operate and i am in that that mindset too with them i appreciate it because you see the freedom that they've given themselves even though they may not have uh every two week paycheck and stuff like that like i really appreciated the hustling spirit and i think that was he was really was just trying to say was that if you want the dream, you're going to have to hustle to get the dream, right? And don't stop at nothing. Don't be ashamed. There's no shame to your game, right? There's no shame to your game. He said he was just selling this shit for $5. And that from there, a little building, some building blocks, right? But for some reason, I don't know how, everybody done turned him into, once he died, they done turned him into a spiritual guru. And now all we see are altars everywhere of Nip. Why does Nip is not a god? He's not a demigod. He was a human being who got shot from the consequences of being in the streets. For <laughs> some reason, because he became famous, everybody done made him a guru, and that's not what he is. His music be true to some shit. He just speaking on his life. You know, he's being a message of encouragement for people who also been a part of that life, right? But he's not a spiritual guru. Yes, it was beautiful that his energy and his music touched everybody to where they were in unity when it came to his funeral. And nobody was shooting up shit. Everybody was there, the Bloods and the Crips. But he's still not a spiritual guru. <laughs> you know, what I mean? he's still not a god. He's still not a demigod. And we've turned him into doing that. Like so many people. And it's so weird and creepy. But that's not here, near, or there. But people, these spiritualists and stuff like that, are so fixated on I manifested this. Law of attraction, this. Candle work, that. This, that, and the third. You're not doing that this it's because you're not in alignment it's because you're not high vibrational it's because you are not this that and the third but in fact god has put you in that season to sacrifice and go through this hardship so that you could propel further and higher than they ever had now we're over here not knowing what shit they trying to do half of their ass is probably selling drugs they probably doing scams you don't know the other side of their game <laughs> okay you don't know the other side of their game and we over here comparing thinking that we're doing something wrong that god not fucking with us because we're looking at money hungry materialistic people who are bound to their materialness who ain't gave us no new knowledge no new wisdom but continuously yelling at you for not being high vibrational enough to get you a coin when like i said it is easy to get a coin you could just go apply to a job <laughs> you could have some coins shaking in front of mcdonald's it's easy to get a coin it's really not that hard the hard part is not going the easy route stand do this way because god told you to go down this journey it's easy for them to go to another village to get food but the israelites god told the israelites to stay steadfast a lot of them didn't want to so god said fuck it 
<laughs> fuck it just give them give them some list of rules because obviously that's what they want they obviously want to be enslaved they all obviously don't want sovereignty they didn't pray for it but they don't want to go through the cost of what it requires you got to go through the fire to be renewed right so anyway <laughs> um yes yeah, so and whoever swears by the altar, that is nothing. But whoever swears by the offering on it, he is obligated. You blind men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering. Ooh. So a lot of times people are making offerings to Ogun. They're making offerings to Oshun. They're making offerings and all of these things. And they're gloating about the offering that they're making. But they're not really they're not really taking the time to really sit at that altar that they that they place. So you see all these spiritualists and they got all these altars and they got all this candle magic and all this dark red candle with all this bunch of herbs and shit on it just blowing, right? And they're over here thinking they doing something um, and trying to show you that they doing something they better than you and that you need to be paying them for their spell work and shit. Because obviously, yo, yo, juju don't work for you. Right. But they're not talking about the sanctity of the offering. They're not talking about the religion itself and what requires of the religion. You want to go over here and glorify Oshun, but you're not taking the time to really do the work, the work of Oshun in the Ifa religion and Santiara religion and stuff like that, right? People want to scapegoat the religion, the sanctity of it. You know, God said, yes, we put up our ancestral offering. This was Juju. That's why, again, I got to say, give her props and I love her for this. She said, just sit with, at your offering. Have tea at your offering. Really bring in and correlate and, and drum up the energy at the offering. Now, the other one told you to leave your ancestors alone. She said, don't disturb your ancestors. Your ancestors need a rest. But you just said, you have a communion with your ancestors. Build a close connection with your ancestors. When you put your your coffee on the offering for them, drink you some some of that too. Drink you, have you a cup and drink it with them. Talk to them about your day. Talk to them about this, that, and the third. Really connect with them. And I really love that she did that. And I really love and, and really is blessed that God has sent me to my grandma's house. Because at first, I was really angry, arrogant, mad about it. All last year, I was mad and angry about being here. I was doing a whole bunch of things to not get me to be here. I was putting myself in a lot of danger to be here because I was comparing myself to somebody who I thought was divine, who was holy, who was abundant, who was high vibrational, right? Um, People who are hyper fixated on saying grand rising right um who the people who hyper fixate on changing the letter i to e y e right which is grammatically incur fucking correct <laughs> does it fucking make sense um but you know what I mean? But they say honor that altar. It's not about the damn offerings. It's not about the damn. It's about even he just said in the Gita. It's about the service. It's about what are you doing as a living sacrifice, right? Sometimes, yes, God and Jesus said, you don't have to keep killing the goats and stuff like that. I need you to be of service for yourself. You yourself can be the sacrifice. Okay, I'm not going to do this, that, and the third because it's preventing me from doing this for God, right? God is asking me, Ebony, stop fucking smoking weed and drinking so that you can be an ultimate vessel for what the work that I have for you to do. But I keep smoking and drinking weed. <laughs> you see what I mean? So, um, so yeah. So, God is like, fuck the offering, bitch, the altar. <laughs> Work on sanctifying the altar. Work on, you know, it, when I first did my ancestral veneration, I wasn't asking for anything. I wasn't doing anything on there. I was just like, hey, thank y'all. I was just really getting into decorating the altar, really getting into the aesthetic of my altar, really like allowing the spirits to be there. Even if I didn't know really all that I was doing, I was just trying an error with it, right? But I wasn't asking for anything. I was just trying to learn the, you know, the thing about it, right? And that's the that's the next phase. Like God is like, stop 
you know, uh, excuse me, it's not about the riches. It's not about the glory. It's about the the experience. It's about the connection. Yes, God could bless us. Yes, we can have favor, but it's not about hyper fixating on the favor more so than it is about the relationship with God. You only have favor because you have a connection with God. You have a close bond with God. God sees that you are actually working towards that relationship, right? So it's not about what I can manifest in three days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck that shit. When did you pray last? How, when's the last time these spiritualists is talking about prayer and supplication? When's the last time they're just talking about holding on and having faith? When are they talking about the power and the beauty of their connection with God and experience that they had with God? They ain't even talking about that. They telling you, you are God. And thus, you know, we are gods. And uh, the man is trying to keep us there. <laughs> you know, the hotels, they be hotel in. But it's more than that. Um, Hood Botanica. Damn, I ain't been to her. I'm going to go look and see what her content is. I ain't been on her content in a minute. Hood Botanica used to work with song, with Solomon. She used to do like these seals of Solomon and stuff like that with work. But she talked about, she said, if you want to use the seal of Solomon and you want to work with that magic and that energy, you're going to have to be of service. Solomon is going to ask you to do things. What, what, I need you to do this, that, and the third, um, before you can do that. So, Hood Botanica used to be, we used to have like five hour lives where she would introduce readers to people. She would open up this space and it used to be such a beautiful, high vibrating, um, energy. But then I ended up going to Lolly's content and I stopped going to Hood Botanica because Lolly was complaining. But Lolly's content was making me anxious. So... I wasn't anxious over there in the hood botanica. She told me to wrap my head up and just watch. And we used to be in a zone, baby. It used to be beautiful. It was just a beauty coming out of that space. You see what I mean? So now for me, it's like the people that I was following thinking that they were going the right way and that people were picking on them come to find out. No, the people, they did it for a reason. It was for a reason. You know what I mean? So don't be, don't be fooled. by the anchor people agreed um where was i going anyways yeah 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 da 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 it's a show down i'm about to lay your body down that is not the right song to be trying to see while we're reading the Bible. <laughs> Baby, here's a last idea. <laughs> um, you blind men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering? Therefore, whoever swears by the altar swears both by the altar and by everything on it. And whoever swears by the temple swears both by the temple and by him who dwells within it. And whoever swears by heaven swears both by the thorn, by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe, mint and deal and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. Ooh. Spencer, y'all be doing all this ha this uh candle magic and shit. Y'all over here adding cinnamon. Y'all over here uh spice and shit like that. I just watched this video where this person was like, y'all over here talking about cinnamon. What about all spice? And they were really talking about them washing their hands with all spice so that it could get abundance and shit like that. Money hungry people, money hungry spiritualists. Um, but they're not talking to y'all about mercy about compassion, about empathy, about faithfulness, about justice, about all of the qualities of ethics and values. Were they telling you how to get a coin? A coin? <laughs> um, but these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. They said, that's well fine. If you want to do it, that's fine. But also talk about these things. Don't just hyper fixate on one. 
you blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. Damn, that's true. Because you clean a dish, right? You could clean the outside and the rim of a dish, but then like of a cup, and but the inside still got leftover wine, still got leftover soda and shit in it. That's nasty, right? So it's the same thing. They over here adorning their bodies with oil. They dressing in the latest and the and the, the gliss and the glam of fashion. They, you know, doing all of the things, all of the things on the outside, the external. But what about their inside? That baby's heart is tarnishing inside. She's a hateful woman. Is that any good? Just because she got her, because she put that shit on? What, what good is that if she ain't put that shit on inside? <laughs> put that heart shocker on, <laughs> right? And I told y'all before, I said, just like you not, just how you not going to just have anybody perform a heart surgery on you. You shouldn't just anybody just be doing things, doing recce and doing the things for your heart chakra. You need to be careful about the things. Um, you blind Pharisee first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish so that the outside may become clean also. Whoa. Right. First, clean the inside. Then that's a proper way of washing dishes. Damn, Jesus, you wise. But also real shit, though, right? That's a proper like you have to clean your insides. We have to clean our hearts. We have to clean out our root chakra, our sacral chakra, our solar plex. We have to clear out our chakras before we could ever really think about how the things are manifesting in our external. You cannot point fingers at your mom. <laughs> At your auntie, at your cousin, and things like that. If you're not pointing figures at yourself and the things that you're doing wrong yourself, you cannot help read somebody and give somebody guidance if you're not reading, giving yourself guidance, and telling yourself which route to go. You cannot do the, you cannot help a healer. You cannot be a healer and you're not healing yourself. If you're not opening up your, your heart space, how can you offer services of encouragement to people? Because you ain't even let God in. You got to get through your heart chakra to be one with God. You can't teach the people oneness if you ain't never had oneness yourself. You didn't achieve oneness. The only thing you achieved was getting a job. There's still more to spiritual spirituality. There's still there's more to that shit, right? So woe well, to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. So you too, outwardly, appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Oh, he said, on the outside you look righteous to men, but you are lawless in the inside. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had been living in the days of our father, is my living in vain, so, uh, we would not have been the partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers. You serpents, you broad, you broad of vipers. How will you escape the sentence of hell? Damn. He said, how would you escape the sentence of hell? You can't, bitch. <laughs> Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of you, some of them you will kill and crucify. And some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. Jesus said, I'm training up these disciples in the way in which they should go. But a lot of y'all going to kill them. Y'all going to crucify them. You're going to try to, ooh, 11, 11 on the clock. 
as I just looked randomly. Y'all gonna do all this, that, and the third. And that's why our message spirit said, act like Abtala, not Ogun. But if a motherfucker put their hands on you, wow the fuck out with Ogun. But these people not going to like you because you wise, because you're righteous, because you're doing the right thing, because you really genuinely is about God, because you really genuinely sitting here holding yourself accountable, doing the work, looking at your shadow, looking at your dark attributes and trying to change that, right? You are over here genuinely doing the work and those are you are the ones who are there going to attack. I told you, your joy, you know, you was down and out for so long. I've been down so long, it looked like up to me. What? They look up to me, huh? I got fake people show me they love to me. Stay up to my face, right? So when you are doing right, these demons are going to be mad. Watch how many of them not like my ass. I told you, these readers are not here to like me. <laughs> and spirit said it's okay you're not meant to be liked by them you're here to help the people you when you finish when you up here when it's your time when you answer your call and what you're supposed to be doing they're not gonna like your ass either but it's okay because you're doing the right thing you're being righteous it's not about the glitz and the glams and the candles and the things and the thems right it's about really fully stepping into your power and going about the right thing. Tatiana Taro was getting attacked constantly by the hood healer. Every time you came, turned around, the girl was bringing that girl up. When you go and watch Tatiana Taylor's uh, content, she don't mention not a goddamn thing about that girl. Not a damn thing. And I was like, well, goddamn. Who? 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 <laughs> I was like, who? Who? <laughs> right? But she wasn't, she wasn't bullying her. She wasn't, she was minding her business. She was just trying to put out her message. Every time that girl had a blessing, the girl was bringing it up. Talking about she had, she had got the shit first, right? And, and I'm thinking she right. I'm thinking, cause I'm looking at, at what she acquired. I'm looking at her external. Meanwhile, she's over here yelling, screaming, shouting, belittling her, the people who was watching her lives. Yes, she's fucking beautiful. Absolutely. But after a while, your beauty leaves when you're so ugly inside. It doesn't matter anymore. She fucked up her own bag. She fucked up her own bag. You know what I mean? She could have been made bigger than what she is. Honestly, to me personally, her content died down. I don't see nobody posting her shit like that no more. Back in the day, I used to see that shit massively because I thought that she was of the righteousness, of godly, right? I've seen it with the other lady who kicked me out of her praise dance team. They were very similar. They both Lamert Park preachers, right? They both Lamert Park preachers. And I told y'all, I don't fuck with Lamert Park like that. I'm an LA native. I don't fuck with, I hate going to Lamert Park. Every time I try to go thinking it's going to give me the energy that I think it's going to give, it does not. It's just a bunch of ignorant, not ignorant, but arrogant ass black people. Like they so fucking arrogant. They're so fucking rude. It's very clicky. It's very showboaty. When I go over there to Lamar Park, I hate that fucking shit. Like it's so uncomfortable. Like it's so uncomfortable. And it's all about show. It's all about show there. Everybody think that they somebody over there. They're very matrixy. <laughs> It's getting very, very, very much matrixy. All these people got this money, but they ain't helping the homeless over there. Issa Rae. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, and <laughs> y'all know I hate uppity black folks anyways. And I, ha I hate bougie LA. I hate bougie LA. Black bougie LA people get on my fucking nerves. And I've been around. And I've been around a lot of rich people, but the black bougies get on my fucking nerves out of everybody in the world, right? Because it's riddled with a lot of antsy blackness and and things like that, but they disguise it in a, the way of black power, black upliftment, when in, not, in fact they're not. None of these people is helping the hood kids in their arts and stuff like that, but they want to belittle you um, because their parents were able to uh, afford Debbie Allen in Lulu, Washington, Right. But neither one of these ladies is offering free services to to the hood black kids, but they in the hood. 
They know the hood black kids can't afford your fucking things. You see what I mean? Don't be full bamboozled. Um, and I'm not trying to attack these women. It's just that we're going to have to 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 realize who we want to follow, who we want to, what our goal and our missions is. If your goal and your mission is to acquire, you don't give a fuck about trying to really go on this purpose journey, purposeful journey with God. By all means, follow their content, listen to it. There's really great stuff there too. There's really great things there, um, but it is still centered around material bondage. Just be careful with who you go to when it comes to your spirituality. It is best that you just go with yourself than it is and go and seek God and ask God for the guidance than it is for you to seek some, some man, some human being. So let's continue. Um... So that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. Um, What is that? Um. That about about Molly song. We killed the prophets. Damn, oh. I can't get the tune. Mm -hmm. Why we killed the prophets? <laughs> I can't get it. I can't get it. Whatever. Um, Jerusalem, 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 Jerusalem. Who kills the prophets and stones? Those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. For I say to you, from now on, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, this is signs of Jesus' return. We ain't going there. We ain't going there. <laughs> So that was Matthew 23 that we just read. And I thought that was very beautiful. Like, Spirit was like, read Matthew 23. And I'm sorry. All right. All right. Um, but I was beautiful. And I had stopped. <laughs> Look at my hair. I didn't stop blow drying in order to talk about this. Um, and it's so funny because it's always the ones when I'm not done up that <laughs> be having the good messages, right? Um, but yes, be weary. This is a spiritual warfare. Be weary in these times. And a lot of us, like I told you, are heading out of America. Because America is the place we don't need to be. <laughs> we need to be somewhere that is going to spiritually support us, right? So, I will go somewhere that I'm spiritually supported. Not in America where it is not spiritually supported. America does not have any type of spiritualness to it in fact it went the whole history of america is to slaughter those connected to the divine hence our indigenous ancestors hence you know all of the things all of the things all of the things um and so yeah that's the message i don't even know what the message was but that's the message. Oh, the message. Stop letting anybody just talk to you any whole kind of way. Just because they they got a platform, don't give them the right to be yelling at you. Just because, you know, they got a gazillion dollars in their account don't mean that they're more righteous than you. <laughs> just because, right? We talked about a joke. The wicked has shit. The wicked has things. The wicked obtains a lot of things. Um... Think about Indiari versus Erica Badu. <laughs> what do their messages talk about? What are the messages in their songs? But who goes all out their way when it comes to spiritual things? Erica Badu has a whole unnecessary jungle book of spiritual items in her bedroom. You don't need to, you don't need all of that, right? But NDRE ain't got all of that, but she have a little sound bowl. She's going to give you a little sound bowl healing. And her music is going to talk to you about healing and about uh, choosing joys. I choose to be the best that I can be. I do. 
Mm -hmm. Authentic and never leading. Cause I, mm -hmm. I choose. Oh, what is it? Uh, there's joke. There's hope. You don't need to pay the last. Mm, you better thank God for that. Yeah. There's hope. You tell it and it ain't a smile. Na 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 na. Y'all let her thank God for that. Yeah. Ooh. Remember she talked about back from the city of the field. I know you love another man made me feel that I could accomplish anything. He said just like me. He wanted to sing. He had open door and no doors. He lived a simple life. He was extremely poor. But that didn't keep him from seeing the light. On top of that, he had no hot side in a hustle like in the USA. All I did was complain, you see. Living here is paradise. He taught me paradise is in your mind. Cause no, there's hope. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. There's hope. For your situation, there's hope, you know, for everything. But it starts here. It starts in our mind. It starts in our mindset. And that is not to acquire things and to compare it and look at who has and who has not. And from there, determining who is righteous and who is not. The devil looks great. The devil wears Prada. The devil wears Prada. Ever. <laughs> Adam E. wear not a I'm in between, but way more fresher. With way less effort. Because when you try, God, you really are. Uh, uh. <laughs> you, my God. Right? Um. So, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Is if they trying to yell at you, don't you let them go that way. Yeah, but yeah, don't be scared of no bitch. If she threatens you, let her threaten you. She want to step up, let her step up. If she want to fight, she want to fight. Let's fight. She want to pretend and cosplay the hood. Let's show her how hood we could be. <laughs> but it ain't nothing. But that's not worth it. It's no worth that. What's the use of that? Okay, you don't like me. You gonna fight me? All right. And then at the end of the day, I'm still ain't, we ain't still ain't gonna like each other. So what's the point? What's the point? All you are going to do is just get your ass beat. <laughs> that's, that's just, what's the point? Because you don't like what I say. But we can still go through it anyways. But yeah, so anyways, if you need to call Ogun to beat a bitch ass because she put her hands on you, do so. And justice will be served to you. You could get self-defense for that. But if you, but if you don't, and you got, you know, if you don't, um... You know, and they feel some type of way. Let them feel some type of way. Because these the same bitches who let her call people out don't want to be called out themselves. So if they want to be called out and they, they're going to accept it, then that's great. Because it's not about personal attack. It's about being honest about our journeys. And it's being honest about the people we follow and stuff like that. Now, I vouch for Juju pre-2021. I don't know what she's doing now. I don't know the content that she's saying. I don't know the rhetoric that she is using. But at that time, I would say out of everybody, she was the one who who made me feel enthusiastic to go down this journey. Enthusiastically going down this journey. And everybody's content helps. And I'm not going to be a part of anybody's, uh, um, you know thingamajigs right their dramas and stuff and their beasts with each other i don't give a fuck <laughs> but at the end of the day i'm trying to teach you guys and show you guys that this this journey a spiritual awakening of going through spirit of going connecting to your supreme godhead personality to to your oneness with god your heart chakra your resurrection how whatever we want to use the, the terminology these preachers, these religious leaders, these tarot readers, these yo mama, these elders, 
all of these people, watch out for them. Use your discernment and don't ever let nobody talk to you no type of way, including me. And if there comes a point where I get wayward, and that includes do not follow and listen to my ass either. Do not let nobody bring you down to the path of hell, especially when you have been a righteous person. Do not feel tempted because you're not over here having all of these material items, not say, to be thinking that you're doing something wrong or that, you know, do not be tempted to follow down that path to be bound by materialism. Now we all have our journey. And we, and maybe that's their journey right there is to be bound by material till somebody else comes and passes the baton to them to teach them the way for their next step. We're all in this together. We're all going to fight each other. We're all going to argue with each other. We're all going to be pissed off because we're all going to be shedding truths about each other. <clears throat> and that's okay. That's a part of our journey, holding each other accountable so we can all climb the ladder. This is not no craps in a barrel shit, bitch. I'm going to get out, you're going to get out, and we're going to keep holding each other to get out and help each other out. I'm not pushing you down to lift me up and vice versa. This is not where we're going, especially as black people. This is no longer us attacking each other. This is about each other helping each other out. We need to work on our freedom first. I don't give a fuck about a white person's uh, a spiritual freedom. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> They done lived a good life for a cool little minute. They got some consequences they got to go through. But it's for us helping each other out because we don't have the guidance. We're all doing this on our own. We are all literally the first generation of, of generational breakers, right? Curse breakers and first generation of really using, going back to using our indigenous practices. So it's all of us who are going to help each other out. And it's all of us who's going to use our gifts to help each, hold each other accountable. But at the end of the day, just as we're going to course correct and be like, hey, stop yelling at them. I'm going to tell you, stop letting people yell at you. We are all projecting. We are all doing the things, right? And so I'm holding you accountable. I'm holding me accountable. I'm sharing my experience. You're going to share your experience. There are going to be things in my content y'all not going to like. Y'all going to be like, stop. <laughs> stop letting this bitch tell you to suck dick. <laughs> and absolutely. <laughs> right? <laughs> so. We all going to have, we're all going to fall short. It's not about saying, oh, I'm better than this person. Or I'm better than them. Or I'm more righteous than them right there. No, we just be at different journeys. And there's going to be things that we all going to have that is shadow. And that we're not going to like. There's things you're not going to like about me. There's things that I'm not going to like about you. There's things you're going to love about me. There's things I'm going to love about you. Because we're all family. And one thing about family, family going to tell you the shit they don't want to hear. But we ain't no fight. But we ain't fight because I ain't fighting family. But if a bitch put her hands on me, family or not, I did I have to? As long as you don't touch me, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Just as long as you don't put your hands on me. But yeah, that's all that I had to say. Um, also spirit says to, when it comes to these arguments that we talked about in our other reading, when it comes to arguments, a lot of people are going to use arguments as the ammunition that they need to, to harm you. Um, a lot of people, you know, feel some type of way for, about you and you had no idea that they felt that type of way. They've been harboring a whole lot of shit towards you and you had no idea because you was minding your business. And now they don't pick the fight with you and pick an argument. And now they're using that as the ammunition to shoot you, to hit punch on you, to hit on you. And, you know, if you think about it, Shakilla had an argument with her best friend. They were arguing. And from there, that girl attacked her. But that girl already was harboring whatever shit she was for her to have hit her like that. If you're not harboring over somebody, you're going to try to defuse the situation, especially when you love and you care about them. You're like, hey, we're not about to get into this right now. Go calm down. And I'm going to go calm down. And we can talk about this later, right? But if somebody is like all up in your face and they're just looking for a reason to punch on you, to kill you and take your life, that's because they psycho 
<laughs> they psycho and in their psyche, they justified that action. So you have to be careful with people right now. A lot of these people is just just avoid if you know that they're very temperamental. Like I've keep having I, for the last two days I've been having dreams of family arguments, and I've seen the cousin who who's acting crazy. Um, so that's it's insane that I keep ha for two nights I've had this dream, um, and I know God is saying something right, and I, God already told me to be careful and watch out for this cousin, anyways, um, and to be cautious of how I how I um, travel when I'm when I'm around this area and stuff like that. So you need to be cautious, and you need to be cautious too. Um, we just, but yeah, so God's just saying that, um, a lot of people are going to start fights and arguments with you, but it's about you make, remaining calm. Do not give it away. If you could walk away, just walk away. Your pride right now, it's not, it's not worth you losing your life or it's not worth you being paralyzed or whatever the case may be, right? These people, we release that anger. I release my anger. I'm not angry like the way I was just last year. Last year, if a bitch wanted to smoke, I was I was sparking the fire. I was the one sparking it. Like we could go. But this year, not, this year, me and my aunt gets along so well. Like it's such a peaceful, harmonious relationship because I've calmed down and she's calmed down. But it starts with me. Right, it started with me, and we we established mutual respect, right, and we good. But I was in that energy last year, and thus we were responding both to that energy. So we were butting heads a lot, right? But now we don't feel the need to because we're not in that energy. Now last year was perfect for that because last year was the energy of the ego. So the ego wanted to act an ass all last year. You saw my ego acting a whole ass all last year. But this year I've been I was so like I told you I was so grateful because it was here that I've learned humility. It was here that I learned some more information about my family. It was here that I was able to talk to my grandma and get like family tales and ancestral knowledge and learning stuff that, you know that and some of these confirming some of the downloads that I have received the year before being in my place and connecting with them and learning about you know our generational traumas and stuff like that so I'm really blessed that I was able to get this detour of my journey because if not my ego would have ruined all of my manifestations all of my real of fortune all of my ten of cups it would have been ruined because of my ego I would have, I was ruining my relationship, <laughs> you know, my, you know, and so now spirit could bring it back. And now in my calmness, in my humility, I could be like, all right, let's work on this again. Let's get this back together again. Okay. What was happening last time? Our egos. Okay. This time let's, let's operate as adults. We were both very childish. So we operated in childlike manner last year, but this year he could come back and we'll be good. And it's no, it's no need to hold a grudge because you was acting away. I was acting away and we both were acting out of character. We were both acting immature. We were both egocentric and egotistical. So I'm not going to hold it to him as I would hope he won't hold it to me. And that's the same thing with any type of relationship that we're going to have moving forward. And so I think it's beautiful. Also, Spirit wanted to say, if your family is abusive, absolutely step away from them. But you're, we're going to learn how to coexist within our families. We are the leaders within our families. So it's you and your energy is going to change and, co and change the way in which your family responds to you. How they used to respond to you back in the day was because your energy back in the day. If you hold the energy of being a passive bitch, then people are going to think that they could say anything and everything to you. The reason why I can't go around family and go to family functions now is because I ain't with that shit no more. Back in the day, I used to be with that shit. I used to let them say anything. Now... I I'm I I have a mouth on me. I speak up, but bitch, who the fuck you talking to? You need to chill on that shit, cause I don't play that shit, right? It could be just that simple. And now I'm getting to it with my cousin. She crazy as fuck. She shoots me. And I told y'all when I was talking to the hood nigga, he told me all these instances of family going to the church, shooting up the church. That's what it is. I said, what is it? 
That's what the fuck it is. Leave these churches alone. Your family, leave the church alone right now. Because the church is personal. He told me about how homie went into the church to shoot up a cousin or some shit like that, right? Someone personal. His, you know, these people shooting up their best friends. They shoot like these these street people. So if your family's in the streets, leave them street ass families members alone. They done experience some shit and, and exposed to shit that you ain't never been exposed to. Your code of ethic is different than their code of ethics. Mind you, let me tell y'all a story real quick. I know this is long. This is going to be a long video. So, my, so I have a cousin who is a year older than me. Maybe less than a year, right? So, we're really close in age. <laughs> and she chose the street life. And I told y'all that time she had me go to the blood picnic. <laughs> Bitch had me go to the pub. The, I thought I was going to a Hispanic fest. Yeah, she didn't have me going to a bloods picnic. Okay. They then did they they the initiations and shit. And now she going for their celebratory shit. I get up hard. I ain't never been so scared in my life. Okay. But anywho, her sister, who is four years older than me. I'm more closer to her sister than I am her. I was, but her sister was jealous, has a very jealous spirit, which is why I don't fuck with her no more. And she's the one who got, who got, who had just had back. So, look, all my other, so her, so my, her sister was fucking on our cousin's ex-boyfriend. Our cousin is probably like, she might be like four years older than so she's about like eight years older than me right so she was she so she, according to the cousin she said that she asked her she said it was all right it was fine and she switched up on it but anyways they have beef with each other mind you this was a second beef with each other that they were having so my cousin who's a year older than me butted herself into her sister's affair and then one day the family went to to eat the cousins went to go to taco night her sister wasn't there but it was like i think it was like my mom i've had tea um, our other cousin that I keep having these dreams about right now, the the older one, the one the the one that's eight years older than me, yeah, and her. So they ended up having a feet a fucking fight after they ended up eating tacos. They fucking had a fight, a brawl, and she over here fighting this girl. She fighting this girl because of the beef that her, her the girl and her sister is having, but her sister and her ain't fighting. They ain't fighting. They just had a couple of arguments, a little splat. So why are you so angry that you fighting this bitch? You not even in this. She ain't nobody suck Joe. Ain't no lick nobody coochie of yours. <laughs> Cause she gay. So, <laughs> you know? And so she like, why are you that angry? Right? You see how that she that angry? Now, say she's mad at me because I didn't go to the christening. And she want to start a fight with me. Now, ain't no telling. She might want to shoot the fuck out of me. Because she might have shit harboring and escalating within her own self internally. About whatever shit with, when it comes to me. So Spirit's like, I don't even need you going to the family functions right now. Especially now that you are. Because back in the day, I, I didn't say nothing because I knew their tempers. So I'm like, it's not even worth it. But I've grown into having my own like powers right my own energy my own like you ain't gonna talk to me no type of way and because of that my fighting spirit has been awakened um <laughs> it's just not the time anymore to go because this bitch not gonna fight fair and she's more angry and she she's operating from the streets the streets got a different type of code than the regular regular family i ain't from the streets so for me i'm not gonna hit family I have that energy. I'm not fighting family. I'm not about to punch family. I'm not about to do nothing towards family. Because you're my family. Hell, I'm really not about to go hit on no bitch in the street. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. But I will be the, be the bitch ass if I need to. But I'm not. I'm not. I will defuse before I go that way. I will turn the other cheek before I go that way. Um. So she may have all of these harbor. And then she might want to shoot me because she might have a gun with her because she's operating from the streets. You see what I mean? We have two different. Now, if I was operating from the streets and she was operating from the streets and I had a gun, she had a gun, then we go eye for eye, bitch. But if you know I ain't operating for like that, why would you even want to start that shit with me? But because you lack cold, because there's no honor amongst thieves, there is no honor in the streets. 
she belongs to a gang. She got more loyalty to the gang than she has to her family. I'm an op. Even though I ain't even in no shit, but I'm an op to her. So Spirit said, leave your family alone. Stay the fuck away from them. Leave that shit alone. That ain't you. So we're going to have to learn who, in terms of our family, we hang out with and associate with and who we don't. And there's going to be a time where we might have to cut them all off and sacrifice all of it, our relationship with all of them, to move into a higher positioning, into a, in a better place. But you have to be careful. You have to watch out for these tricksters. You have to watch out for these angry birds. If you're trying to go a life of peace... People are not going to like that. They don't be mad about that. They, they Because they ain't got it themselves. So they're going to go and want to disturb your peace. You want to go the path of righteousness. Demons not going to like that. Demons are going to want to attack you. Because you're going the righteous path. Right? So you got to be careful with all of these people. And all of these influencers that I have mentioned. That I use as an example. I'm going to say now. I ain't vouching for nobody right now. In this moment right now. 2023. 3 May. I am not vouching for nobody because I'm not watching nobody's content right now. So I don't know what the fuck anybody is saying or what they're doing. If I was watching all of their contents right now, then I could be telling you like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, all of that things. But I don't watch their content. So it's going to be up to you who you gravitate to. You have, might have gravitated to some totally different type of influencer. There's that one girl that be having the nose ring and shit like that. She be sparkly, but she's cute, but she's chunky. I'm cute, but she's chunky. You know, she's cute and she's chunky. Um, I don't watch her content, but she's pretty, you know, I see her video sometimes. I don't watch it, but I see it because I'm like, oh, she's so pretty. Um, but I don't know what she spews out. I don't know what she says. You might be gravitated to her, but because you're gravitated to her, don't be fooled by the numbers. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block, right? Um, don't be fooled by the number of content they have. A lot of these, um, number a lot of these celebrities was enjoying spirituality and shit like that. Don't be fooled by SZA. <laughs> Don't be fooled by Summer Walker. <laughs> Leave them bitches alone. <laughs> Leave them bitches alone. They can have all the crystals and all the candles all they want, but if they're not doing anything internally, it defeats the whole purpose, right? Um, so yes. Stay away from arguments. People are looking for any type of way to to strike at you. They've been wanting. She's been probably just sitting like, oh, I just want to beat this bitch ass for the longest. And you ain't did shit. You've been nice and kind. You be like, hey, how you been? What you been up to? Okay, you been on the grind. I feel you. You been nothing but kind. But this bitch over here watching you like, I can't wait to beat this bitch ass. Oh, she got my motherfucking nerve. Oh, look at her. Why she always fucking smut? Why she uh, <laughs> uh, smelling? And now she want to beat your ass. And now she want to start a, a a thing that had a little commotion. Like, don't even say nothing to them. You could just say, hey. And they be like, what, bitch? What you say, bitch? I'll beat your ass. Because they're ready. And the matter and matter they are, the more miserable they are in their lives, them demons are going to be used as a vessel. Okay, demons are going to use any and everybody as a vessel. It's going to be the people closest to you as the vessel. So, that's all I got to say. And I'm going to finish. I look like um, it's given very much Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Okay, what he do? Did he free the people? Probably not. But, you know, I don't know my history. I do not know black history like that because I don't be fucking with that shit. I told y'all black history and that civil rights movement was for the uppity blacks. That was not for our poor asses. <laughs> that we, your grandma was not in, trying to vote. <laughs> your grandma was not trying to vote. She could barely read the bully, the body, so <laughs> she was a field worker. <laughs> that was not her. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. I gotta go. <laughs> Finish this. <laughs> bye bye. We had a really great discussion. I just want to say that that was really great and impromptu. And I'm glad I was being obedient and listening and doing the things. <laughs> Bye.